Now we're going to talk about this being a two scalar tuning. We've got the two scaling devices there. Now, because I'm locked up at home, I can't um, I can't show you a speaker scaler here. It's all in the office. But that's them, that's what they look like. They're beautiful units. Now, with regards to tuning speaker to scaler, when speaker to scaler is running, it actually becomes part of the environment. The environment has a great effect on the tuning point of the scalar unit. Now, tuning it ensures that the scalar unit runs at its best operating point. But how do you find that frequency? And quite often I'll use, I'll use the term frequency point. There's actually a broad range of frequencies within which spooky scalar will work very well. Now, some people find that frequencies above 6 megahertz are ideal. Other people find out that their spooky device tunes actually below 5 megahertz. And they get quite a bit worried. They think, gosh, there's something wrong with my scalar unit. I read elsewhere 5.4, 5.6, 5.7, 6-point something, and, and mine is below 5. Mine is 4.9 or 4.8. Is something wrong? Well, the good news is no. It's just the environment around you, all the fields that are bathing the scalar field, the scalar units bathing you, are all affecting the frequency that the scalar unit runs at. So there's many factors why the scalar frequencies can differ so, so much. But we'll go through some of the main points now. Now the length of the link cable can alter the tuning frequency quite significantly because the cable forms part of the tuning circuit. If you can recall during other videos that I've had, the cable forms part of the tuning circuit. The cable is carrying the EMF signal, the electromagnetic field, to the receiver. The scalar field is created actually by the receiver and reflected back to the transmitter. If the length of the wire changes, it changes the tuning point and the frequency will change. A 13 foot link cable might tune at 5.1 megahertz, but when it's made longer, it could tune at 5.6 megahertz. Now those, this example wasn't actually arbitrary. We, we did this in the office. We, got a 16 foot link cable and then we put the very, very long cable on and, and saw how much it changed. And each time it changed, we measured within our, our oscilloscope and other laboratory instruments. And it was the perfect frequency. Nothing was wrong. The link cable just changed that, that uh, frequency. If you've got any links, loops or kinks in the cable, that will also alter the frequency. The electricity doesn't flow quite so easily through the cable if it's got any sort of loops. So we recommend no loops, please. Now, the link cable is carrying the EMF, and EMF is affected by, wait for it, metal. So anything that's got metal that can be concrete, it can be walls, it can be furniture, heaters, electrical cable, other electrical cable, which is copper, anything which is metal, will affect the tuning point of spooky scalar. The metal that's near the link cable absorbs the energy which is flowing through it, and the signal strength is reduced, but it also changes the inductive reactance, which is the fancy word for the resistance of the cable. If the environment is noisy, we're not talking about audio noise, although it might have an effect. <laughs> Gosh, yeah. With a baby in the family, the, um, the ambient level rises a little bit. But we haven't got our scanner running just at the moment, so, because we've got none at home. So I can't actually say yes or no, but um, I'm talking about electrical noise here. So we're talking about 
radio and TV signals, cell phone signals. Gosh, 5G signals, the poison and the They all affect the tuning frequency set point of the speaky scalar unit. The signals that surround the scalar field interact with it and interfere, it mingles, and um, it'll alter the set point. If you have the same um, setup without any radio signals passing through it, the tuning point will, will alter quite significantly. Time for a kefir. This one is banana and kiwi fruit. Anything which is growing a bit old and a bit furry, any, any fruit that's becoming furry, <laughs> I make a kefir out of it. <laughs> it's going to ferment anyway, right? And it's still got all its minerals and everything, all its nutrients. Okay, seasonal changes can also affect the tuning frequency. The difference between summer and winter will change the the, uh, the uh, frequency that the uh, scalar unit runs at. The, uh, it, it actually changes quite a bit. Now, the biggest reason behind that is the transmitter unit has got electronics in it to create the EMF signal, which gets sent to the trans to the receiver. Those components are temperature sensitive. The characteristics of the components changes. The difference between hot and cold will change will change the type of signal that's sent through the link cable. It's the reason why we recommend turning the spooky scaler on and leaving it on for 30 minutes before tuning it. After 30 minutes, the theory goes, the temperature has stabilized and it won't get any more warmer. And then you can tune it and walk away. So what does it all mean? Well, it means that there's no absolute ideal frequency for spooky scalar. For every instance, there will be a different ideal. And the process of tuning will determine the ideal frequency range within which to run your spooky scalar unit. So we've got it tuned, but how do we know that spooky to scalar is tuned correctly? We get a lot of people saying, well, the light's on, or the light's on, but it's very, very dim. It's so dim that I'm so worried I can't sleep at night. What do I do? Well, this is what you do. When the speaker scaler is first on, it immediately runs at 8 megahertz. That's its maximum frequency. You then turn the frequency tuning knob anti-clockwise. And this reduces the frequency. The first spike in the light brightness and the tuning light indicates that the ideal scalar frequency has been found. The frequency range is when the light is at its, uh, sorry, the, the range is when the, is quite broad. The range is probably close to one megahertz. If you find that the light is brightest at around 5.2 megahertz, that's good. But the scalar unit will still work at 4.8 megahertz or 5.6 megahertz. It's a wide range around the point where that tuning light is its brightest. Now, if you continue to turn the tuning knob anti-clockwise, like you're not supposed to, <laughs> The indication light will go off and then it will come back on again. And people have scratched their head and thought, well, that's kind of weird. Why is that? Well, the lower frequency point is the EMF operating frequency. That's the one you don't want to operate at. 
Sometimes I've had this around 1.6 megahertz. Other times it's been higher, about 3.5, 3.6 megahertz. That is when Spooky Scalar is not running in scalar mode. It's running in EMF mode. When, so, but if you do want to be a glutton for punishment, you keep on winding it down and you can de determine, yes, there is a second time when the light comes on. Therefore, the first point was the scalar frequency operation. The reason why the scalar frequency is higher is the scalar field does um, is faster than the speed of light, certainly faster than the speed of EMF propagation.